So Johnson calls this finding A sent towards our goal. We want to help the user know where they are, where they've been, what they need to do, so that they know where and what direction they need to go in. Now, one of the things I want you to remember about users that makes this difficult. We have a tendency to interpret things literally when we are focused on our goals. So, whatever we see on a display, whatever we hear on a telephone or a computer, we tend to interpret literally if we're not completely focused on it, we're focused on our goal. Let's look at an example. This is actually from an ATM. Now I want you to just very quickly look at some of the titles and I'm going to ask you where you would go to accomplish a couple of things. Do you want to pay a bill? Where do you go? Payment. 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 Transfer money to your savings account. Transfer. Transfer. Pay your dentist by funds transfer. Pay your dentist by funds transfer. You're going to wire your dentist money to pay your bill. Could be transfer. Could be where would you say? Oh, open end fund. I think. I'm not exactly sure what that is, to be really honest. Anything else? Could be other service. Because now you're not transferring between your accounts. Even though we use the word, you know, we're transferring money, you're actually wiring money to someone. Change your pen. Change pen. Open a new account. Other service. Anything else? It could be open end fund. Assuming an end fund, this is British by the way, assuming an end fund is a, an account, right? Okay, you want to purchase traveler's checks. Request What's that? Request checkbook. Request checkbook. Anything else? Possibly other service. So some of these were pretty clear, right? Some of the others, how clear? Yeah, eh, not so much. We're not really sure where to go. So using things like request checkbook, trying to figure out what that means, one of the best things to do is let's look at the user's goal. Now, if we are sitting here at an ATM, we're pressing buttons all over the place trying to figure out where we're going with some of these. Do we want that? No, we don't. What we really want is to provide this scent towards our goal. Things as simple as verbiage that you use can make a big difference in how easy or how difficult it is for users to know where they are and what they need to do. <clears throat> So what are some of the design implications? We want to design interactive systems that really help lead our users in the direction they want to go in so that it's easy for them to find what they need and accomplish their goals. Because remember, when you go use an application, when you go to a website, it's not about how it was coded. It's about you want to accomplish your goal. Right? You want to focus on what you have to get done. That's what we need to focus on as developers. You want to understand the goals at each decision point in a task. Each choice point should provide options for every important user goal. And you want to clearly indicate which option leads to which goal. So that you don't send your users off on a wild goose chase. Let's look at some more examples. These are from the Johnson book, by the way, in case I didn't mention that. Let's look at A up here. Here you're making a reservation. All right, it says cancel reservation. Are you sure you want to cancel this reservation? Yes or no? Clear? 
not clear? I'd say it's pretty clear. Anyone disagree? You're allowed to disagree, by the way. Now, if I read it, it's very clear. If I don't read it, is it still clear? Actually, it is still pretty clear if we just skim through it. It's a really important design implication to keep in mind when it comes to something like that. It is a critical function. All right, let's look at this one. Let's look at B now. Cancel payment. So Wells Fargo, we have a payee, the amount, delivery date, transmission date, account number, check number. The payment can still be canceled. Request cancel payment. Send now. Put in output box, cancel. Quick, which one do you push? To cancel. Cancel. I'm going to cancel, so we hit cancel. Make sense? Anything else? Put it in the outbox. What would put it in the outbox do? I would guess it saves it on hold. I guess or cancel it later or something, maybe. I'm guessing. Is that a problem that I'm guessing? Yeah. What about send now? Send the request. It could be send the request to cancel. Could be. Uh, but then what's the cancel button? Cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel? cancel? Yes. <laughs> maybe. If I read the whole thing, that's what I would kind of guess. How clear is this? Right? You're dealing with your money, your hard-earned money. How confused are you? Very. How, is, how likely is it you're going to look for someone other than Wells Fargo next time? Yeah, probably. So the person who designed this probably made complete sense to them. Not so much for the user. So compare the differences. Something that seems so relatively small can have a substantial impact. Now I want you to think back when I asked you to whip out your phones and look up your best friend's phone number. Do you remember how many different ways did you guys mention doing that? Yeah, there were three or four different ways. Right? So. You did it one way, you did it another way. I can't remember who did it how. Now, what this illustrates is something that's called familiar paths. That's that we will take a familiar path whenever possible rather than exploring new ones. Familiar paths are comfortable. They're familiar. We're, we have a tendency to be very efficient. It doesn't take a lot of cognitive load. So we want to keep this in mind when it comes to our design. How many of you have been in a hurry to accomplish something and you know there's probably a faster way to do it, but you're like, I'm in a hurry. I'm just going to do it the way I know. I do that all the time. Everybody does that. Why? Because to you, you're getting it done faster. You're not having to increase that cognitive load and figure out a new way of doing it. That's the way people are. Unless they're, many times, forced to find a new way, or they think it's really cool, really, really cool, they're going to want to stay on these familiar paths. We want to keep that in mind when it comes to our design. So we want to remember that sometimes this mindlessness is going to trump what they call keystrokes. Basically, when they're talking about keystrokes, they're talking about different steps. It may take me 10 steps to do it the way that I know, and five steps to do it the way that I don't, if I'm in a hurry, which one am I going to do? The one that I know. So whenever possible, we want to guide the users to the best paths. Provide a little, you know, some way of guiding them. If there's a better way of doing things, make it easy for them. Make it easy for them to discover that and learn. We want to include things that help our experienced users speed up, because we are all very impatient. And we want to make it easier for people to switch paths if they need. 